Hi, and welcome to Serverless Migration Station. I'm Wesley from Google, joined by Martin to help you modernize your apps running on one of our serverless compute platforms. In this and the next few migration modules, our little friend Porter will take you on a journey to migrate from AppAge and task queues to cloud tasks. That said, this video won't feature any migrating at all. Oh, really, Wes? Why not? I thought this was the serverless migration video series. Uh, what's up with that? Ah, oh, you caught me, Martin. Yeah, usually Porter does take users from point A to point B, but here in module seven, we need to take a detour first to reacquaint folks with App Engine task queues. We'll add their use to the module one Flask App Engine NDB app. Then we can migrate it to cloud tasks ahead in module eight. Okay, I get it. So we're going to take one of our original Python two apps, add App Engine task queues to it, and then learn how to migrate to cloud tasks. Yep, you got it, Martin. In module one, we migrated from App Engine's Web App 2 framework to Flask, a popular framework in the Python community. While Web App 2 apps run on App Engine, Flask apps run on App Engine and most other hosting services. So pause here to review the module one video and do its code lab to reacquaint yourself with that migration because this module picks up where that one leaves off. Ah, yes, uh, I remember that migration. Uh, so what are we going to use task queues for in our sample app, Wes? Yeah, glad you asked, Martin. Well, you know our app creates a new entity for each page visit. Because it only shows the 10 most recent visits, there's no need to keep all the old ones, right? Why take up all the extra space and possibly exceed our data store free tier and possibly have to pay? Well, we'll have to add a task that deletes all visits older than the oldest one shown. OK, uh, I have to be honest. Uh, I haven't used App Engine task queues in quite a while. Uh, can I get my hands dirty and do it myself while you're showing us on screen? Absolutely. Go and grab your module one code if you did the code lab or clone the repo or download the zip file if you didn't. Pause here if you need to do that. Module one is where we'll start. If you want to do this by hand with me now or on your own time, please follow the module seven code lab. Ready? Let's go to the computer now and do this. Since we're only adding the use of task queues to our app, there are no changes to any of the config files. Python 2 users should ensure your lib folder is intact. If not, or you're unsure, just delete it and rerun the pip install command. Since it's always good to start from a working app, use gcloud app deploy to redeploy the module one app and ensure it works before we update it. This is one of the few modules where the app will look and work slightly differently when we're done. To delete the oldest entries, we'll use some timestamp utilities like those in the time and daytime modules. We're also going to be adding logging to help debug. Most importantly, we need to add the task queue API. The imports are in the best practice ordering of standard library packages first, followed by third party libraries, then finally local libraries and everything in alphabetical order. Since we only care about older visits not shown to the user, it has nothing to do with when visits are created, so store visits stays the same. The actual fetching of most recent visits hasn't changed either. But instead of returning with the data right away, let's use the timestamp of the oldest visit and delete everything older than that. We'll save a human readable log entry and save it for the user. That's followed by the most important part, creating the push tasks to do the work, passing in the timestamp and the handler the task should post to. Once the task is added, return the data like before, but also include the oldest visit timestamp. When the task runs, the task queue service sends an HTTP post to the handler trim. So let's move to that now. Flask routes default to HTTP get, but tasks are posted to their handlers. So that's why trim's decorator is designated that way. To start, it grabs the oldest entity timestamp we got from fetch visits. Next, it queries for all entities older than that. We don't need the data, so just ask for keys only to speed it up. If old visits exist, log how many we're deleting and do it. Otherwise, log there aren't any. And that's it for the task. The main handler stores and fetches visits as before, but now we have a timestamp for the oldest displayed visit to let the user know that visits older than that will automatically be deleted. Both the data and oldest visit timestamp are sent to the template for rendering. But before we do that, we better update that template. The majority of the template stays the same, but check for a timestamp. If so, show that older visits will be deleted. Because it checks for the existence of the timestamp, this template can be used in other modules because there are no side effects if the timestamp isn't there. 
And those are all the changes necessary to add push tasks to our existing app. If you did everything correctly and redeploy the sample app, you should now see an additional message down at the bottom letting users know what visits were deleted by the push task. OK, back to the program. Thanks for the tutorial, Wes. Where should I go if I want to reacquaint myself with App Engine task queues? Well, Martin, I'd say start with the task queue overview page in the docs. While our simple app only uses push tasks, you'll find docs for both push and pull queues there. Cool, I'll take a look. Uh, but can you give me a heads up on what we're doing next? Sure, Martin. Now that we have App Engine task queues in our app, we'll migrate it to cloud tasks ahead in module eight. If you want to read ahead, check out the links to the migration page as well as the cloud tasks documentation. You can also do the module eight code lab if you want to get started on it right away or go back to the repo to either look at the code or check out the next video. And we look forward to having all of you join us for module eight and moving to cloud tasks. This is Wesley on behalf of Martin and Porter. We hope to see you at that next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Mm -hmm.